Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, the co-founder, chief medical officer, and the executive vice president of the nonprofit CLL Society. And I'm here to present some important research that was recently presented at the International Workshop for CLL, IWCLL 2023. The first paper I'm going to talk about discusses whether it's safe to stop ibrutinib therapy in patients with stable or decreased level of CLL after six years. And what's the bottom line in this paper? For most CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia patients, who've received six years of continuous ibrutinib therapy, the levels of residual disease decrease or remain stable for the subsequent six to 12 months after stopping ibrutinib. This research was performed by Dr. Andy Rostin, PhD from Leeds, United Kingdom, and his colleagues, and the results were presented at IWCLL on October 6th through 9th in Boston, Massachusetts. In the way of background, we all know that brutin tyrosine kinase inhibitors, BTKIs, such as ibrutinib, have significantly improved progression-free survival, PFS, in CLL. Usually, Ibrutinib is given as continuous therapy. That's the standard way it's used. However, treatment resistance or side effects can occur. There is reason to hope that intermittent treatment may lower the risk of developing those issues and allow people to stay on the drug longer and get longer benefits. It was also encouraging to note that in some patients who stopped ibrutinib due to toxicity, the median progression to survival was about two years after discontinuing. So in other words, after stopping the ibrutinib, the patient had a couple years before the, the uh, disease came back. However, what happens when treatment is discontinued in CLL patients who are doing well on ibrutinib is not known because it's usually not done. This study was designed to assess the kinetics of the disease after the treatment is stopped and those have been treated with ibrutinib for at least six years and are still responding. Who are the participants and what was the method used? The research looked at 172 patients treated with ibrutinib in the FLARE trials out of the United Kingdom who had a baseline uh, evaluation before May of 2017 so they could be followed for at least seven years, six years of treatment and one year of follow-up. And what were the results? 112 patients stopped ibrutinib at the end of treatment of 72 months. D disease dynamics were studied based on the level of residual disease in the peripheral blood at the end of treatment. 15 patients, or 12% of that 112, had achieved UMRD at the end of treatment. That's a relatively rare finding with a BTK inhibitor like ibrutinib. But what was encouraging is that all patients, all 15, maintained the UMRD in the blood for six months and at 12 months after the end of treatment. A larger number, 41 of the 112 or 37 percent, had very low levels of disease but not quite UMRD with levels of 0.01 to 1 percent at the end of treatment. After 12 months, those patients the findings were very encouraging. Six of 41 had converted to UMRD. In other words, their disease had gone down even though they were no longer on treatment. Almost half, 20 out of 41, maintained their level. Five of the 41 had disease increasing to greater than 1%, with two out of five greater than 10% at 12 months after the end of treatment. Let's look at the patients who had higher levels of disease. 36% or 40 in 112 had levels of 1 to 10% of CLL at the end of that six-year treatment. What happened to those people after 12 months after therapy? One of them converted to UMRD even from that high level. Seven of the 40 had decreased levels of CLL at the end of the year. 14 of the 40 maintained that 1 to 10 percent disease level, and only 8 out of 40 uh, developed greater than 10 percent disease, of which 1 out of 8 showed progressive adenopathy. 
16 of the 112 patients, or 14%, had levels of greater than 10% of CLL in their blood at the end of treatment. What happened to those after a year? Two of the 12 decreased to uh, some level between 1 and 10%. Four of the 12 had stable disease, but five out of the 12 had evidence of disease progression after 12 months. Although disease progression was seen mostly in those with greater than 10% at the end of treatment, the percent of CLL patients with stable disease over the year that they, after they stopped treatment was the same in all groups regardless of their level of disease at the end of treatment. So what are conclusions here? In most CLL patients who've received six months of ibrutinib, the levels of residual disease are either decrease or remain stable for the subsequent 6 to 12 months after ibrutinib. This is very encouraging. How much is real disease control off therapy and how much is due to redistribution of the cells from the bloodstream to the lymph nodes and bone marrow will only be answered by longer follow-up. However, the stability of disease level after treatment cessation supports the safety and advisability of testing an intermittent treatment strategy determine whether this could potentially reduce treatment emergent resistance, treatment related intolerance, and forces us at least to research the dogma of treating BTKs, treating with BTKs until progression or intolerance. Thanks for listening.